and welcome back everyone welcome back to another week another edition of the code for giants cup number 14 your bi-weekly dose of brazilian starcraft i'm of course just ivip with him with me i'm joined by these amazing players the people in the chat and by my plushies as well welcome everyone welcome to i guess technically our second broadcast of the night or of the day we were live earlier last night with a lima league Lima league week number 229 it was a very intense event it was amazing it was beautiful to be back uh in the return with the return of a lima league and now we are here a couple of hours later with our next broadcast and here we go spawning in the top right hand corner of crimson court we have the brazilian terran player the yellow terran representing the platinum heroes it is inexorable and spawning in the bottom left hand corner we have as a part of we have the brazilian zerg player the blue zerg representing Xemius gaming it is vitrinho here we go. And if you're in the chat, predictions. Predictions now open. Place your bets on who you think will take the series. Best of luck. Best of luck in the chats as we settle into our ZVT. Again, exclamation mark. Be in the chat if you guys want to have a look at the back yourselves. We will delve into the bracket after this series. There's a lot to get into. There's a lot to go over. Uh, I will already say that we have the return of Eric. It's great to see him once again. We have some big names. We have Eric. We have Inexorable. We have Master. We have uh, Allison as well. And many many others we'll get into it we will get into it for those that may be tuning in for the first time this is a bi-weekly tournament this is of course organized and hosted by cosmos a big shout to cosmos he's a massive brazilian streamer brazilian caster and he has been organizing this event for almost the entire year at this point and we have been able to join in as the english broadcasters oh, here we go we are here we are back oh and uh, wish me luck because it's been an intense day. Uh, <laughs> I was, I did just tweets and I did uh, mention in the chat earlier that um, alas, I was unable to get much sleep after Alima League. I made the mistake during the broadcast of Alima League, League to actually have some coffee, uh, and I guess that did just keep me up all night. And I just, I could not sleep. I just, <laughs> despite my best efforts, could not sleep. Could not get, could not get any rest. But you know, that just means that we have that much more energy for this cast. That just means I'm just gonna crash and pass the hell out after this cast it's gonna be amazing it's gonna be beautiful i'm gonna sleep all day <laughs> at least until the next cast oh oh no not like this not like this um another bit of a psa as well as we're getting into this and so far it has been you know a racks expand standard opener here out of inexorable likewise a vitrino going for a hatch gas pool as well nothing too crazy uh outside of taking extra gas guys one drone goes down already oh my god one worker goes down where are the links where are the lings? Vitorino, he was a little bit too greedy. Two drones go down alongside forcing and canceling a spore crawler, or spine crawler, sorry, a gas geyser as well. Vitorino, he was cutting corners by skipping lings and he gets punished for it. Aye, aye, aye. Alas, it wasn't quite worth it in the end. But what I was going to get into a bit of a PSA is uh we did find out so originally we were going to be streaming um olima league over on the uh, chijix uh sorry chijix platform of course the korean platform was a third joint goes down um and we were going to be releasing the vods on youtube uh but i we did just find out that to export the vods from chijix you have to be a partner uh, of the platform and we do not have that status we actually cannot get that status period um because i was looking into it i was trying to work on it and uh, apparently you do need to have or you do need to be with a korean bank uh to be able to be a partner on jijik so it is very exclusionary in that sense so we actually cannot export our vods um so i have to kind of work through some hoops to try to get that going and eventually uh, upload it to youtube so yeah we'll have to get around to that uh, at, at, at some point We'll have to get around to it. So, uh, yeah, we'll do our best. We will do our best. Regardless, we're going to be getting into our hatch. Sorry, into our roach follow up. Oh, no. Uh, the wall's not a wall. The Hellions and Reapers, they slip into the mineral line. Drones are going to be going down. It's going to be already three worker kills. And we're getting even more as drones are getting roasted. Ooh, they do line up for a moment. An extra two workers. That's going to be five kills in total. Meanwhile, the Hellions, they confirm the hatchery. They're actually stuck in a really awkward position. Um, they can't really do much more from here, but they can get another drone. So they, get, they can get a drone, they can get a tumor as well. And one more volley. Oh, they will get it. Again, so much value here from Inexorable back across the map. He's getting into his 2-1-1, a 3-CC, 2-1-1. So a bit of a more economic start from our Brazilian Terran player getting into a double medevac 16 marine double drop so very aggressive follow-up here after the third cc and uh i mean he's already found a lot of success 
winding it back a little bit here when it comes to the Zerg player, he is going to be playing Roach, is getting into delayed Link Speed, into his Lair, into Roach Tech, but so far it doesn't look like he's being overly aggressive, especially with the Lair that's on the way, it looks like Vitorino is planning to drone and play Macro. Looks like he does plan on Macroing on up. And we'll see where Vitorino goes from here. As Inxorbic, he is building up his bio. Again, working towards the eventual Stim timing. Stim is now finishing up, and Medivax have arrived, and Inxorbic should soon push. Should soon be moving out. Remember, this is not an all in. Behind this is getting his throw base fully saturated. Double E base for double upgrades are on the way as well. So Inxorbic is looking quite solid here in that follow up. And really, it comes down to what the Zerg player has to defend. I'm afraid to look. Okay, Unistat, four roaches. Four roaches, all four of them are here at the third base. We have queens here in between the bases. Vitorino is exposed. He is vulnerable. He doesn't have much to work with. And here comes the bio. And uh, the Terran, he's looking for the queens, looking for any kind of key snipes. Dust him in. Takes out all the tumors and he can keep going from here. Again, only four roaches and three queens. I mean, transfuse uh, can help survive. Actually, in Zorbo, he doesn't push in. He doesn't commit. He's playing it safe. Rotates into the main, could have gone for the hatchery, but instead going into the main base. He can snipe the queens, he can and he will. He gets one! One queen goes down, two queens go down at the same time, a worker is falling here to the Hellions, ten a worker is falling, ay ay ay. And the roaches, they don't stand a chance. Ah, they, they fall one after the other, all the queens as well, and inexorable, he is snowballing out of control. Even going for the bailing nest, ah, he's getting more than just that. Getting into the mineral line. 16 drone kills. Ay, ay, ay. I get insane damage. That was in conjunction with the Hellions here at the third. And he is still not done. Dropping here towards the fourth. Links will be able to respond, and not everything was unloaded. So, I uh, that you know, he's going to be able to hold for now. And behind this, Inexorable can just chill, get his third base up running, get additional factories on the way as well. Building up, settling in. There we go. As we do see, Vitadino is able to keep up somewhat, but it's a drone count. It's the economy that I'm really concerned about. We have 38, now 41 drones for the Zerg, as opposed to the 70 SCVs for the Terran. And Exorable, he's working on fire at this point. He's going for the third base as well. Lings have to respond, no bailing, so really rough trades here in the mineral line. And Exorable, he trades very well. Oh my, oh my god. <laughs> He's gonna kill the Lings, straight up. He will kill every single Ling. The juggling as well from Inexorable, he saves the Marines. And he can keep going. And again, he is just pulling Vitorino apart. Before it, Inexorable really gets in, even into his own build, into his own game. Yeah, fourth base falls, Hatchery crumbles. Uh, there's no more Queens. Roaches are trying to keep up, but alas, Vitorino is being pulled apart left and right. Ah, uh, and it's time to stim, and to win. Ah, uh, ah uh, no. As it is normal, he sort of steps his heart out, picks up every single verge. And at a certain point, we're just going to run the units, units of pool here. The third hatchery goes down, GG gets called, and inexorable takes game number one. GG. Inexorable does take the first game, and maybe if you have yet to tune into these events in the past, you'd be unfamiliar, but Inexorable, he is the strongest Terran player in the bracket. He is poised to make a deep run. If I'm not mistaken, I believe, did he come first or second place last week, or last edition? Uh, he came first. He is the reigning champion. He's the reigning champion here in this tournament. He is poised to make another deep run. We'll see if he can. We'll see if anyone can stop him. He's the one to beat is going to be the one to beat here. Here we go. We are settling into our next game. And it's going to be on Oceanborn. I have to get used to casting on these 
older maps now. I say older maps, the current maps. We've been casting a lot of events on the PTR, a lot of tournaments on the PTR. And it's been quite refreshing. It's been a lot of fun uh, discussing the maps, talking about them, embracing them, and you know, learning all these quirks about them as well. Uh, but now we're, we're back to basics. We're back to uh, the current map pool. What's also interesting is that we actually don't know which maps are staying. We know that some are. We know that it's going to be, what is it, three? Three of the current maps are going to be sticking around. But we do not know which. Not yet. For now, though, we're settling in. And spawning in the top left-hand corner of Oceanborn, we have the yellow Terran player from the land of Brazil, representing the Platinum Heroes that lead the series 1-0. to zero. It is inexorable. And spawning in the bottom right-hand corner, we have, we have the Brazilian Zerg player, the blue Zerg, representing Eximius Gaming, going for a 15-15. It is Vitorinho. Interesting. So with a 15-15 opener, this usually leads into Roach play. Uh, the reason for this, because we're going for a 15 hatchery if, into a 15 spawning pool, as we should be cancelling this gas geyser. Yep, there we go. Uh, because it's going to be hatch into pool into a delayed real gas, because your gas income is so late, usually it's, you know, it's a little bit wiser to just skip link speed entirely and just go straight into roaches instead once you do get into your gas income. That is usually what occurs, so I'm leaning towards that, especially after the roach play that we saw last game out of Vitorino, but we'll see. We'll see if that is the trend here for the Zerg player, or if he does kind of work against that and, and go into link speed and into bait links. Which would be a little bit less efficient, but still possible. And now, though, you see an Exorable just going for a Rax Expand. Save that opener so far. It isn't necessarily about the openers, it's about the follow up here between our players. Oh. There we go. Since our Marines are pretty good. <laughs> They're pretty good. Well, that puts a crank in the duck. <laughs> I see Maddox in the chat. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it, it means that it's going to take like a full day's work to properly uh, upload and get all the VODs ready on YouTube. Like what I mean by that is that we have to individually re-record the VODs from the VOD <laughs> uh, and then render them and then edit them and then upload them. And it's, yeah, it's going to be a whole process for each individual match from Alima League. I mean, they're really good. They're, they're really good matches. Like, the highlight for me was definitely, like, Clem versus Zaun and uh, also Trap versus Oliveira. Oliveira versus Cure. Just some really good matches. And, uh, again, I do recommend them. Um, I do recommend the VOD. I mean, the VOD is available on Chizik. VOD is available. Um, we did post a link in our Discord server earlier. I think we'll make a, a tweet or a post about it as well. Just so um, everyone can be aware of the VOD itself. But, um, yeah, it is going to be available and... Or it'll eventually be available on YouTube. It's just, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's going to take some extra work. I, I think the problem is that it's going to take like a full day's worth of like editing and rendering. But the problem is I just don't have that time because I'm casting. I just mentioned it. Like after this cast, I'm going to bed. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to crash hard. Like, and then I wake up and then we just keep casting, right? So it's, it's more about like finding time to, to dedicate to that sort of thing. Where like the PC isn't doing anything else, right? Tomorrow we have the Tussle, or the Turtle Tussle, I should say. We have the Podcast, we have Infinite League. I will find some time. I think I can do it over the weekend, but it's a couple of days from now. So, which is a shame, but regardless, it's all good. Meanwhile, back at home, 3cc. Once again, same build. Same build here from Inexorable. He's going a 3cc into a 2-1-1. So, once again, it's going to be a stim timing with a, a double medevac push. So, same build two games in a row. Uh, there's the star point now on the way. Should be seeing a reactor into an add-on swap. Meanwhile, Vitorino back at home. Once again, Roach play. Which, as we mentioned, with a 15-15, makes sense. Makes sense to skip link speed. Go straight into Roaches. Now, when it comes to kind of dissecting or going over the last game and, you know, where we could have gone and where we should have gone. Um, unfortunately, Vitorino here was being a little bit too greedy. This time, he hasn't lost any drones. If you remember last game, he was having a very hard time maintaining himself and a very hard time uh, limiting kills here from the Reaper. So, so far, so good. A much better early game here by the Zerg player, definitely. Um, but it's also about recognizing the build that you're up against and recognizing what you can and can't get away with. 
uh, we saw that when the two on one hit, what did Vitorino, Vitorino have? He had four roaches. He had four roaches and four queens. That just was not enough. That did not cut it when it came to the defense. So hopefully Vitorino, he's able to respect the build a little bit more. Overlord Scout will confirm. He gets eyes you on the CC. Nice. CC has floated over. Oh, shout to in control. Uh, but he also gets eyes on the 2 one one So he has seen enough. He should know. He should be aware. And we do need extra roaches. I'm not too fond of the early Bailey nest. We saw this same thing in game one as well. I don't like it too much because we invested into the Roach War and we're investing into Roaches, but now we're spending some gas and resources on Link Speed and on Banelings when this this kind of Link Bane composition, I mean, we're, it's it's not going to come into play. I uh, know when we threw down the Roach War this early on. So it's just a little bit inefficient. And what this means is that the resources spent on these upgrades on this tech could have been sent, spent on more Roaches. And without them, I mean, here comes the army and Vitorino, he has... Not much to work with. And Exorbly sims in. Going for the Queens. Do we have a chance to use? Okay, the army backs off. Waits out the stim. Not too bad. Boys are being pulled. And it looks like the Marines are going to be forced to pick up. They didn't know he does hold. It will cost him five workers. And the job gets into the main. He's going for another Queen. And we'll get it. Queen goes down. They bust into the mineral. Line. More drones falling. Gets one roach, going for another, the target firing, gets 14, oh my god, 14 roach, sorry, 14 drones go down. <laughs> Not like this, I'm afraid to look, it's going to be 14 drone kills, 12 links, 2 roaches, a queen, a lot of value, a lot of value here, and as you can see, what, barely, almost one full medevac worth of marines goes down, not even, that's going to be 6 marine kills. As well, alongside the hellions, and from here, inexorable, he can just keep trading. Cancel trade very well. Gonna back off, gonna recover his HP. Behind this is getting ready for his second move out for his reinforcements. He's gonna be getting ready. And here comes the follow up. This time with tanks, with more marines, with additional medevacs. Now, as Inexorable moves out, Vitorino, he's going for a link run by, and there's not much at home to defend, so there's potential. There's potential for damage. He will get into the middle line, but there are reinforcements back at home. The yeah, Marines, they stim in. And inexorable, he does not turn around. Oof, he cleans up the lings. The SCVs, they just turn and fight. Not a single SCV goes down. And now inexorable, he cannot focus on the push. It's only one tank, but are there any banelings? Oh, uh, not quite. Stims on forward. We do get a couple of transfusers, but the Roaches, they crumble. Like, Roaches cannot fight this head-on. Not like this. The Roaches, they all go down one after the other. And inexorable, he has Snowball out of control. He breaks through the Roaches. There's no Link Bane here to work with. Queen's full as well. The Mineral Line's going to get uh, annihilated. And yeah, with this, the follow-up push is just going to be enough to just take down Vitorino to his third base and everything moving forward as well. Really crisp execution from inexorable. And it really is quite punishing as well. It leaves little room for error for Vitorino. And there it is. GG gets called. And Exorable will take the series at 2 to 0. GG. <laughs> GG, well played. Uh, Inexorable will take the series, will advance on into the next round. And the question becomes who does he have waiting for him? If anyone, let's find out. Exclamation mark B in the chat if you guys want to have a look at that yourselves. Uh, shout out to Vitorino. Vitorino. He's more of an amateur player. He is more of an amateur player, uh, but he's still willing to take part and willing to take be a part of the community, be a part of the tournament scene here in Brazil, and still does sign up on a very regular basis. So much love here to Vitorino. Uh, clearly, the, when it comes to the overall build, uh, there is room for improvement, uh, especially when it comes to refining it and making sure that you can be ready in time for the two-on-one and for the follow-up as well. Um, but this is also where it can be very valuable to take and learn from these replays and grow from them as well. Um, it's one of those things where this can be quite valuable to you. Uh, obviously, there are Terran players closer to Vitorino's skill that won't be executing as strong and as hard as Inexorable, but that's also why it's good to kind of learn from that, to be able to be ready for even better play and improve as a player. For sure. 100%. With that, we can head on over here to... Uh, we can head on over to the bracket and have a look at... Oh. Any results so far? Just one. But now we can go over all the matches. Okay. 